expedition on uh, Quentin is on uh, going to help us understand um, basically what expedition launched this year um, and kind of talk about that. I, I've had the fortunate ability. I was fortunate enough to shoot these bows uh, just literally yesterday and the day before the last two days I've been shooting them, working on the video for YouTube and extremely impressed. And uh, I guess, um, I guess take us through these bows real quick. What, what was the thought process behind these two new models for your lineup? Sure. So last year we had the 31 and 33, and that was targeted to hit, call it the majority of the market, uh, a happy medium for everybody. You know, it seems like the popular bow sizes are anywhere from 30 to 33. So we offered one of each um, and they're long risers. So they aim like a little bit longer bow. And so, I mean, different strokes for different folks. Right. So that, series the x light 31 and 33 were received really well um but people kept asking well how about like a shorter axle to axle model for ground blind for the guys out west hiking packing in you know so to reduce weight uh, saddle hunters then we also had a market that we haven't touched for the last few years in like the long draw guys um or the longer axle to axle guys you know we get calls all the time asking, Hey, do you have a bow that goes above 31 inches, 32, you know, plus inches. And, you know, the last couple of years we haven't had that. So that was, that was the goal this year, just to expand upon the X light family. And right now we feel like we got a pretty well-rounded lineup short to call it that longer axle to axle with the 35. It hits kind of everybody. I was uh, really happy to see the 29 come into this because I do feel that, 29 inch bows, in my opinion, 27, 28, 29 are like an amazing area to be in. I think a lot of tree stand bow hunters, a lot of ground blind bow hunters are looking for those types of bows. And I'm not going to name other brands, but there is a major brand in the industry that always puts out a short bow and they, they always sell tons of bows. And so that's why I was always confused why companies don't put out a lot of 29s because that's where the market is technically. So I was so happy to see you guys put a 29 out on this bow, not to mention the way the bow shoots is phenomenal. And so the thing about this bow, and I, I, I want people to recognize and understand from my experience with just shooting these bows is that, Number one, you have a very light riser. It's a very light feeling bow. It feels wonderful to hold and to maneuver. But also, the pure hit power of these bows is like literally kind of mind blowing, really. It, it, these things were hitting so hard. I was really impressed with what I can't even imagine what this thing could do in a hunting scenario. You know, I mean, it would just blow right through any deer I shoot, you know, at 60 pounds and I lowered it, you know. It's just that cam system is just delivering huge hits. Um, and I could tell for both models, it was the same. I will say this. One of the things I really absolutely loved about this bow was the new grip. This grip is a game changer, a game changer from last year. And I would say that, uh, I would love to see this grip on your models going forward. I hope that you guys hold to this grip going forward if possible on other models, because I'm telling you this grip is where it's at, man. It's got that little bit of rubberized material. It's got that really nice flat back wall on it. It feels excellent in your hand. Yep. And that was a, a big thing going into the 2024 lineup. We took a lot of feedback from 2023 X lights and previous models before that guys wanted, you know, a little bit warmer to the touch feeling grip instead of shooting it right off the riser. They wanted a little bit flatter back strap. Um, people liked the increased radius for your thumb on the side of the riser from last year. So we kept that, but we implemented those other changes. And our, uh, our stock grip angle is 19 degrees, always has been. So from factory, the bows will come with that grip plate installed, the 19 degree. But also included in every package is a 17 degree. So it's a, it, it goes from this to this. It's a little bit flatter. So some guys like that feel. I personally like that feel a little bit better. So it gives guys options. Yeah, that's really cool. Let's talk about uh, price real quick, because I know a lot of people, you know, want to get flustered about pricing. These bows are priced in the carbon market price point. And uh, so you got, 19, uh, well, let's call it $2,000, $1,950. Um, is there been a, a, a lot of conversation with you guys about this or people giving you a hard time about it? Because I feel like it's right. It makes sense to me because, again, 
you're priced right at the carbon market, which this material is different than carbon, different than aluminum. So it is its own, you know, structure or whatnot. But how's that been going, I guess? Is it going okay? Has it been a little bit harder than you thought? Or what's the what's the deal with it? Uh, initially, uh, people were very hesitant about it, especially like last year when we released them in those price points, guys hadn't seen bows in that price range before. Now, now you, we see them kind of creeping up a little bit, but yeah, initially guys were like, there's no way I'm not going to shell out that kind of cash for a bare bow. Um, but it took us getting those bows into people's hands and actually shooting them. Uh, and then they understand they, they see the fit, the finish, um, the value that we put into the bow, like ABB platinum strings, Cerakote finish. We offer multiple colors for the cams and pockets to color coordinate with your limbs and riser. It's, I mean, there's a lot of value in it. I also want to point out, you know, and I make this point in my video that I'm finishing up right now for, for you guys, but the, the 35 is actually the right price realistically. Cause you're talking $2,000. You're talking a 35 inch bow, you're talking a bow that can be used for competitive target archery, most likely, and 3D target as well as the tack events. Like this type of bow can kind of do a lot. So, like if I'm if I'm a person who's into 3D shooting, uh, league shooting, all that stuff, like this would be a perfect bow because I can hunt with it, I can shoot league with it, I could probably do ASA type tournaments with it as well. Um, and again, you're getting that you know premium market material now. I think it's important also to state that you guys do make bows that are lower cost options. And so, you know, don't, you know, don't be fooled, you know, that you can't get an exhibition. You sure can. There's definitely a lot of options out there, guys, um, that are not specifically x Light, but, you know, you guys do still cover that market of a thousand, you know, 1100 bucks in, in that area. So I yep. think that's really ha helpful that you guys do that. Yep. Yeah. So we're not specific to just that Magnite material, the x Light series bows. We also offer, um, a couple of aluminum options, one being the Reflection 32. That's a more simplified cam system, but it's right around that $1,000 mark, just actually just shy of that. And we also offer our um, more value-based stuff like the APX and a kid's bow called the Experience. So we try to hit every price point, but our bread and butter is that x light. You know, the APX uh, is just a good one to bring up. I know it's not like the newest bow or whatnot, but the thing about the APX that's a game changer, I think, for you guys is it allows a consumer to get into the Expedition, um, you know, platforms. And uh, it, this is a bow that, you know, a lot of people can afford. I mean, 700 bucks, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a nice bow for $700. And for people to have that ability to get into an expedition, you know, bow for that price is pretty dang good. So I definitely would recommend to everybody watching that if you can't afford the higher level bows to still remember that they do carry a, a mid price point bow that would allow you to play around with the feel of their bows and see what you like, you know, yep. and the experience, another option, right? 500 bucks. That's a great deal. Um, that thing goes what 20 to 40 or 40 to 60. So correct. Definitely a lot of people are going to be able to fit in that bow. That's another great option, especially for youth at 3.3 pounds is pretty light. Yep. And it goes from 19 inches to 27 inches of draw length. So it, you know, if for, it, it reduces that barrier of entry, not only with price, but with value. Cause if you bought it when your kid's young, they can, that bow can adjust and grow with them. Yeah. So the X light, material the magnite and all that it, it, so this is going to be i mean where do you guys see this i guess in the industry do you see it as like above carbon do you see it like this do you see magnite carbon aluminum cheaper aluminum i mean how, how would you guys see it like overall as you guys are because you guys are working with these materials you would understand it you know yep so um i guess it's it'd be right on par with carbon maybe just a step above just because it's um it, it's easier to machine than carbon it's easier to manipulate uh than carbon uh, you can hold tighter tolerances um in manufacturing the risers with them so in that regard it's you know in my opinion just a step above um but i mean aluminum it's 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 a step well above aluminum for sure yeah that's that's really cool so what's going on with you guys in uh crossbows because i know you guys still carry crossbows uh, what what are the options this year that people would should look to if they're interested in getting one? Sure. So uh, it's a carryover from last year's models. Um, we have so our top tier ones, kind of that thousand dollar mark, uh, and just shy of a thousand dollar mark is the Expedite four twenty and Extraction four hundred. So 
Uh, we don't have anything priced higher than that. We're not trying to be a giant crossbow dealer by any means. Actually, we're trying to um, kind of transition out of crossbows so we can focus solely on vertical bows. And we have lesser uh, priced options as well. We have uh, the Rut Hunter. Uh, we have, let's see here, the Scrape Line 390. And we have the Trophy 410. So all of those, those range from like $300 to $600. So priced for anybody and everybody. I noticed you guys put um, a new bow builder on your website. This whole website looks great, by the way. It's real clean, uh, real easy. I do want to speak to the two-tone color options you guys have shown off on some of the bows. Um, just phenomenal. I, I Honestly, everybody I show them to you, I was on a live the other night showing off the bow, and everybody's like, oh, my God, that looks unbelievable. You know, And I was like, I know. These two tones are just sick how you guys did yeah. it. Um, and it looks good in the way you guys did it. It looks like you guys are using America's Best Bow Strings yep. for your strings and cables. And in and, and, and the one you sent me to play with, it had a black riser with like tan pockets, but tan strings and cables. So it looked awesome how it like flow together. I was like, this is some cool coordination. That's for sure. Yeah, there's a there's a handful of combinations that, you know, in your head or when you first hear of it, you're like, ah, I don't know about that. But we see a lot of color combinations come through the shop and there's a few that are like, dang, that looks really good, really good. So it, it, they're tough choices. So is Expedition um, a company that is pro shop specific or direct to consumer? Uh, a little bit of both, right? Okay. So we don't, we don't have a large uh, dealer network. We're always going to push business towards our dealers because that, that's how we started, you know, uh, brick and mortar type uh, shops. We like mom and pop shops. That's where we want to push the business. But say somebody is in a location that a dealer isn't anywhere near them, uh, then then we'll step in. If they don't, we'll always refer them to a dealer that will drop ship. We'll drop ship for that dealer. Um, but if they don't want to go through a shop, then we will do um, direct to consumer. Um, that custom bow builder that gives people like that an option to purchase their bow their site, their rest and all that, and have it come straight from factory. And they don't have to worry about traveling to a shop if they don't have that opportunity. Dude, this bow builder is awesome. Like I'm just messing with it while you're talking. It is the coolest thing. You can literally turn the bow like almost 360. Oh, pretty much 360. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And yeah, the, um, you know, colors, you can put the colors on instantly. It's so sick. Yeah. My, my favorite color is uh, the sniper gray riser and limbs with flat, dark earth cams and pockets to me it reminds me of like a, a luxury car it's just so slick looking that's uh, sick yeah there's so many options I, I i love that you guys have it where you could see it instantly what it was going to look like that is really really cool you know what man I, I will tell you these bows are amazing so like i was very happy with those bows shooting those bows the 30 the 29 and the 35 i i think um Personally, I think they're just really high level bows. And I think when people give them a chance or go to the dealer, which is what I'm pushing them to try to do, it, you know, just give these bows a shot. You know, I would say that once it locks in, man, it is, lo it is rock solid back there when you get it back. And it is power. Like I said, I just I really feel as though if you're looking for a hard hitting bow that's, you know, going to have a lot of precision and just really good balance. I, I, it's just I don't know. They're engineered very well. And. I really like the idea of the Magnite. I like the idea of a different material. Um, and you can completely tell that, you know, when you're holding it and stuff. What I like to see from Expedition, I think, going forward is uh, some thoughts on the Picatinny site area, you know, adding that on the front end. Um, I know you guys did the IMS on the back end, which is awesome because now at least people can take advantage of that technology. I just see a lot of companies moving towards this site idea, right, to have either a Picatinny or some sort of bar going through the riser as time goes on and uh well and the other thing i was gonna tell you guys would be cool is to consider an x light aluminum like maybe do the same bow in aluminum same exact design and everything and just you know because you could lower the price a little bit maybe more people have an option to get it but then they would just really choose between material do you want the best of the best or do you want aluminum which is still great but you know it's different you know yep um, different shooter but yeah, something to think about. <laughs> oh well, I not to give away a whole lot, but just just hold on. We've considered all of those things. I, I don't care what you do; just keep the grip. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. That grip, right. that grip is a, is going to be award winning. I'm telling you, that is just a game changer for those bows. 
Um, I love to see it. You know, there's other brands in the industry who have their own grips and they're terrible. They're freaking terrible. And I'm not going to name names, but you have to swap them out to a, a third party grip just to get them to, to get a, a solid, you know, shooting bow out of it. And I feel like this is something you guys just smashed. And, and that's why I said, yeah, be careful. You don't want to mess that up and go, you know, hey, well, let's not keep it again. Or, you know, <laughs> that's yep. definitely something to hold on to. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. The plan um, is to keep that grip for a long time. Yeah, I'd love to see that grip just start showing up on all the bows, you know, aluminum, magnite, don't matter, you know, because, again, that's going to – I think a good grip also signifies a company as well. You know, like when people think of an expedition after this year, they're going to think of that grip, you know. Uh, other brands are the same way. They have a couple different grips, and every time you think of those companies, you think of those grips. I didn't actually know that that grip adjusted where you can adjust it a little bit. That's interesting um, to change the angle slightly or whatnot to – even do more, I guess, for people because then it gives more options, right? Yep. Yeah, and it's just two screws that you pop it off and throw the the other grip angle on, and so you'll get a different hand feel, hand position, um, and it actually a slight tweak in draw length, right? So you can play and fine tune your draw length with that. So it's pretty pretty cool. And if you think about it, a grip is kind of like an an initial impression, right? You see it on the rack. If it looks good, you want to you want to touch and feel it, then as soon as you touch the grip, it's kind of like shaking somebody's hand. You, you, you know, you, you yeah. think about how was that handshake and stuff like that. So where do we go from here? What, what's, uh, what else can you tell us about 24 for expedition? Anything coming up that would uh, be mid cycle or anything we should know about? Yep. Uh, we're, we're thinking about a late release for 24 uh, in the aluminum market, uh, hopefully trying to blend uh, the reflection and the x Light series. So to share some features. So for that very reason, you know, guys who want features of the x Light but don't want the x Light price tag, uh, they'll be able to have some of that in an aluminum bow. Yeah, that's awesome. Speaking of which, um, throwing this out there, because I, I don't know the answer to this, but how does Expedition handle the tuning of the cams? How do you guys handle that with the current situation? Do you have to shim it? Like, what kind of system are we talking? Yep, about? it's a it's a standard shim system. But uh, so there's there's three kits to each bow: an A, a B, and a C. Uh, the bows are built with B, so call it the middle of them. Then the other two kits are provided with each bow, and one kit is used to shim the cam to the left. One is used to shim the cam to the right. So. It's, we, we try to provide all the tools the user will need to get the bow shooting the best for them. Very cool. Yep. Just checking. I always like to understand all the tech because see if there's anything I'm missing. <laughs> I do like you guys put two bolts on the, uh, the rest area though, that you can do double bolt if you want. Cause I think that's really, that's helpful. Actually, it really locks in a rest good and pretty much centers it for you. So that's yep. a nice option. Um, and it, you guys did mention in the, I was looking at some of the, the comments that you could do the IMS stuff or you could do the core system from Hamski. So that's kind of cool that there's two different options there. There's actually three options realistically then to that system. Yeah. So we, cool. we started 2023 with the core mount and a handful of those X light 31s and 33s had the core mount. Um, we ended up switching over to the integrate mounting system. So right now uh, moving forward, it's just the integrate. Um, but we want to expand on top of that too and add the core back in at some point on top of the, the integrate. So both could be offered. Got it. I thought the, I thought the core just goes over the top of it anyway, with the bolt side bolt. Is there a different mounting system I'm thinking of? So like the, so you have the universal bracket from Hamski that bolts into your normal burger hole. Yep. Yeah. Then if you buy just the Epsilon, it, it has a dovetail that will um, bolt right to the back of the riser into uh, 1024 screw holes. Got it. Okay. That's different. Okay, cool. I didn't realize that. So there's a different thing there. Um, what else is there? I think, uh, yeah, oh, you know, I want to ask you, I didn't, I didn't see this uh, a ton, but you know, I, I see it in the comments when I was reading through the instructions on the bow, but apparently you guys are offering a quiver that will mount to these bows? Uh, well, we offer quivers for sale on the website um, that utilize those triangle quiver, quiver mounting holes. Um, we have some of our old quivers from the past with that same mounting system, some tree limbs, but we also offer um, some uh, a couple of red line options and a couple of um, tight spot options as well on the website. So nothing specific to, to ours, we just offer them for sale on the website in that custom bow builder. 
Cool. Very cool. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. I've been really impressed with the red line stuff, to be honest this year. It's been, it's been nice to, I'm glad you guys sell that direct too. And here that's cool. Um, very good stuff and not very expensive either. So it helps a lot right. of people. Yep. It's pretty cool. You guys got an umbrella. I just noticed that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for all those tax shooters. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for being on me. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for deep diving a little bit of expedition with us. It's really good to, again, talk to you and uh, just see where the brand's headed, where it's going. And, and you know, I, honestly, I think it's a great position for you guys. I love. I would absolutely love to see that mix between, uh, you know, the Magnite and the aluminum and see what we get, you know, out of the design. Because, again, I just I think there's it's a home run. And I really like the idea of you guys being able to offer a low cost solution, a, a normal cost solution, then a premium cost solution and still provide users with that amazing grip and technology and the cams and, you know, the speed and power. So thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Dave.